we go. Here we go. Have you read We've been talking about the mall. And on Monday, we did simple conversion, mold to mass, mold to atoms for elements. Then we moved on to compounds, and everything's been filmed if you have missed it all. And we also talked about percent composition, that is, the percent by mass of each element in the compound. And we're just going to build upon that ever so slightly today. So the first thing I asked you to do in your do now was determine the percent comp of calcium only in calcium phosphate. And remember, the first thing you have to do is write the chemical formula. Right, Dean? Yep. Yes, yes. Because if you don't write the chemical formula properly, your formula mass is going to be incorrect. And that will affect the percent of each element in the compound. So on your quiz on Monday, writing the chemical formula properly is going to be point worthy. 30 points of just writing chemical formulas. Because if you write this wrong, you can do everything else right and I'll give it to you, but this is going to cost you and you'll be the last one graded because I have to figure out all the wrong answers. So be careful here. Most of you are very good formula writers and you have to make sure you're careful here. Formula write ionic and covalent compounds properly. In regard to the percent calcium then, did you get 38.76%? Okay, good, because that shows that you understood what we did last time and hopefully you have done through number 17 on your classwork and we're going to add upon that slightly today and you'll have a lot of in-class time to work on your classwork today so hopefully when you walk out of here all you need to do over the weekend is study a little bit each day don't go for the big cram session on sunday night at midnight because you should be sleeping then all right so we're going to build upon this today and you're going to see that i set you up to start the first problem in our lesson today so this all fits into the elemental analysis that we introduced previously and we already know oopsie i haven't mastered my new computer yet but I will. There it is. Okay, so percentage composition. We know how to get the percent by mass of each element in the compound. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate the mass of an element in a sample, which is very simple, and also the percent of water in a sample. Because in the lab on Monday, we are going to be calculating the percent of water in a compound experimentally and then comparing it to what we should have gotten the accepted value and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But right now we're going to focus on the second part of percent comp, that is the mass of an element in a sample. So the steps in terms of one and two are exactly what you saw on Tuesday when we talked about percent comp. You write the chemical formula, that has to be the first thing that you do, otherwise your percents are going to be incorrect. Then figure out the percent of the element in question. So in terms of what I gave you in the do now, I wanted to know the percent composition of calcium only. So you'll see in a second why I asked you to do that. Once you have the percent comp, you simply divide that percent comp for that element by 100 and you multiply the mass of the sample which will be given to you. So it's very straightforward. So when I say percent element, I mean the percent composition of that element only. All right, so the first column says calculate the mass of calcium in 50.6 grams of calcium phosphate. So again, this is the do now that I set up for you. You already calculated the percent calcium in calcium phosphate. So what you need to do next is divide this by 100 or move the decimal two to the left and then you multiply by the mass of the sample. And in this problem here, it said calculate the mass of calcium in a 50.6 gram 
sample of calcium phosphate. So the mass of the sample is right here. So all I need to do here, I have this one worked out for you, and then we'll work one out from scratch. As I mentioned, convert this to a decimal, or just divide by 100. You can move the decimal to the left, whatever is easier. Multiply by the mass of the sample that was given to you, and now you have the mass of calcium in that sample. So you get the percent comp, you divide by 100, you multiply by the mass of the sample, which is given in the problem, and you get the mass of the element in the sample. And we'll work the next one from start to finish, so you see exactly how to do it. And then you'll decide if we want to do the next one together or if you want to give it a shot to see if you can roll with it. And I've also given you several of these problems in um, your classwork assignments. So you'll have a lot, you'll be very comfortable with all of these concepts before you walk out the door today if you're productive in that section. Max, are you good? Yeah, I was asking about And where did he tell you? Yeah, it's given in the problem. That's the mass of the sample, all right? And we'll make sure that's clear. Okay, so we're going to take a look then at the next problem. And the next problem says calculate the mass of lithium in a 41.8 gram sample of lithium chromate. All right, so, and again, Max, you'll see that that mass is going to be given right there. Yes, yes? When they ask you to calculate the mass of an element, they'll give you the mass of the sample. You could, but I didn't ask you to do it that way. <coughs> All right, so we're working on this problem now. Calculate the mass of lithium. So let's set this up step by step so we know how to work it. Okay, it says calculate the mass of lithium. So we're looking for the mass of lithium, and what would the unit be there? <coughs> no, what would the unit for mass be? Grams. Grams. There you go. I see why you're saying two. I know where you're going now. Okay. In order to approach this, the first thing we have to do is write the chemical formula. You are very good chemical formula writers. This, of course, is an ionic compound. So we have lithium chromate. You must write the chemical formula. Dean, are you okay? Still all right? Did you run? All right, so if we want to know the mass of lithium, then we need to get the percent of lithium first, just like we did in the do now, and you guys were very successful there. So we've got two lithium, one chromium, four oxygen. So you guys are already speeding ahead because you're like, I know how to do this. I can do it myself. Two times the molar mass of lithium off the periodic table. One times the molar mass of chromium off the periodic table. Four times the mass of oxygen, and that's the molar mass for one mole off the periodic table. And I believe everybody was here on Tuesday, so I think the percent comp you found pretty straightforward. If not, it's been filmed and you can watch it if you wish, or you can rewatch it if you think it'll be helpful. So we have two times 6.941 plus 51.996 plus 4 times 15.999, and that is 129.874 grams per mole. And how would I get the percent 
of lithium first? Um, the two six point nine four one over the total one two nine point eight seven four. And when you say the total, what is that called? The um. Yep. Say formula. it. Formula. Formula. Starts with an M. Yeah. Mass. So this is formula mass. I just want to make sure you are straight with your definitions. Good job. And then you divide that, but you also have to multiply by what? 100. You got it, because you're making a percent. Just like we talked about the other day when you're determining your grade on something. If you get 9.5 points out of 10, you have a 95%, because 9.5 over 10, 0.95 times 100, 95%. All right. So let's get this, and I think a lot of you already got it ahead of me. 10.69% lithium. So that's the first step. And that you knew how to do the other day. The new part is right here. You want to know the mass of lithium. And so with the mass of lithium, you're going to divide this by 100. Just move the decimal 2 to the left. And again, we usually do percent comps to the hundredth place. That's what it'll ask for on your quiz. And then we multiply that by the mass of the sample, which is given. So we have 0 0.1069 times 41.8, and that is 4.47 in three sig figs, because the mass of the sample was in three grams, unit of mass. So the only new part is right here, and here is your answer. Okay? Do you want to do the next one together, or you want to try it yourself? You want to try it yourself? Okay. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. And it's right here in yellow. Give it a shot. I'm not going to give you the answer yet by any means, but I do want to make sure that you have formula written correctly because otherwise you're just going to have, you're going to be solving for a different percent. So did you formula write correctly? Yes. yes? Okay, great. So keep it going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the problem again on the screen. I'm going to flip screens since most of you appear to be done. And if you got 10.8 grams. I'm so far from even Wait, yeah. Oh. I showed you the answer because most of you had it already. And if you don't have it, then don't look yet. It's okay. Wait, so do we still have more time? Yeah, you have more time. So when you're done, done, then you should look up. One more little piece, percent of water in the hydrate. And I think I also would like to orient you to the lab today because this way when you come in on Monday, you can just go right into the lab and get it running. And then once it's running, we'll take the quiz. So it'll be good. Not a good idea? I mean, you can try. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Mass of an element in a compound. Write the chemical formula. Get the percent of the element in question and then multiply it by the mass of the sample. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get the percent by water in a hydrate. No, I just wanted to make sure you knew what we were solving for. Okay. Say it again. Here, no, this is fine. No, that's like percent of composition of the of the. Are you good here? Yep. Wait, two seconds. No. One. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the next topic we want to look at is the percent of water in a hydrate. All right, so let's go back and review a little bit in regard to a hydrate. And you will recall, for example, I'll stick that right there for a sec, that this is an ionic compound. Yeah, sodium chloride, see that? You do remember. And ionic compounds, have a particular shape or structure known as a crystal lattice. So you have ions at these positions and they interact with one another and we're not gonna get too technical with it. If you have water molecules inside the crystal lattice or incorporated into the crystal lattice in some way, you have what's known as a hydrate. For example, Let's say, this was also on your previous test and two quizzes ago. Let's say, for example, and you're going to see this in the first problem, that's why I have selected it. Let's say that you had, this is in your first problem here, magnesium perchlorate. Hexahydrate. 
It's a mouthful, and that's why we have chemical formulas, because we can simplify it greatly. So magnesium perchlorate. But then we have hexahydrate. And how do we write chemical formulas, Faith, for hydrates? You do the dot. You do the dot. The number and H2O. So hexa is six and then H2O. Okay, that's a hydrate. That means that you have six <laughs> water molecules incorporated into the crystal lattice. Okay? It was. So, what you're going to see in the lab is that if you heat this substance, this triangle here means heat, you will drive the water molecules out of the crystal lattice. And so you will have the ionic substance plus six water molecules. And since you're heating the water molecules, you're generating water vapor, and the water vapor will escape into the atmosphere. When you have water molecules incorporated into the crystal lattice, you have what's known as a hydrate. And when you heat the sample and drive the water molecules off, you have an, that's an N, a sloppy N, anhydrous material. You know, when you're hydrated, you have a lot of fluids in your system. When you're dehydrated, you don't. And means not. So this is without water. And this is an N, it's kind of sloppy. Can you? You can tell the difference, yes? Okay. And that's what we're going to be doing in the lab. You're going to start with a hydrate that's blue, and you're going to heat it. And when you've driven off all the water molecules, the substance is going to turn white, at least what we're going to use in the lab. So it works very nicely, because you can tell when you've driven off all the water molecules because you have a color change. So you start with the hydrate, and you can get an anhydrous material. And if you compare the mass of the hydrate to the mass of the anhydrous material, you can calculate the percent of water in your hydrate experimentally. And that's what we're going to do in the lab. Today, from the chemical formula of the hydrate alone, you can figure out the percent of water in the hydrate. And that's what we're going to look at here. To calculate the percent of water in a hydrate, and if you do it from the chemical formula, you're getting the accepted value. Again, you are going to write the chemical formula for the hydrate, just as we talked about previously. You'll determine the formula mass of the hydrate the same way you did the ionic compound, but you add how many water molecules to it that are incorporated into the crystal lattice. To calculate the percent of water in a hydrate, then you're going to count up how many waters you've got. The molecular mass of water, which we calculated the other day, is 18.015. You're going to divide it by the formula mass of the hydrate and then divide by 100. So we're going to take a look at this example that we briefly started. We want to calculate the percentage of water by mass, that is the percent of water to the nearest hundredth in the compound magnesium perchlorate hexahydrate. So you work this the same way equally as easy as anything we have already done. We have one magnesium, two chlorine, eight, four times two is eight oxygen, and six water molecules. I'm going to leave that as a unit.
I've got 1 times 24.305 grams per mole, 2 times 35.453 grams per mole, 8 oxygen. Now the other day we calculated the molecular mass of water. We have six waters, 18.015. That's probably a handy one to know, but if you don't remember it, it's fine. You can derive it. Two times the H, which is 1.0079, plus one times oxygen, which is 15.999, and you can derive the molecular mass of water. We're going to get the formula mass, of the hydrate that is the ionic substance plus the water. So we've got 24.305 plus 2 times 35.453 plus 8 times 15.999 plus the six water molecules. Don't be confused. You add the water molecules in. Some of the kids are like, oh, that's a time sign. No, no, no. Add the water molecules in. And the formula mass of the hydrate is 331.293 grams per mole. And now to get the percent of water in the hydrate, We have 6 times 18.015 grams per mole over the formula mass of the hydrate. times 100 is 32.63%. So that's the percent of water in the hydrate. This is the accepted value. When we do the lab, you'll get the experimental value and you can make a comparison and determine your percent error and we talked about percent error way back in chapter one. And determining the experimental value in the lab will be assessed on your test, not your quiz, but on your test. So you really want to focus in the lab. You really want to know what you've done and why and how to calculate the percent of water experimentally. That will be critical. So when you determine the percent of water, from the chemical formula alone, that's the accepted value. When you determine the percent of water in the laboratory, that will be the experimental value, and we'll talk about percent error or review it when you do the lab next week. But this is how you get the percent of water from the chemical formula alone. So this all falls into your percent composition category, very simplistic, as we talked about the other day. The mass of the element in the sample that we discussed at the beginning today, percent of water. And this fits into our overarching learning goal, which is to better understand the role that the mole plays in chemistry. So we've done conversions. We've done percent comp. We've got new elements to look at. I don't mean elements off the periodic table, but new pieces of the puzzle to look at next week. But they all involve this same basic mole concept. Okay, for the next one, you want to do it together or you want to try it yourself? Try it? All right.
Determine the percentage of water by mass to the nearest hundredth in calcium sulfate dihydrate. Give it a try. Let's figure about five minutes to give it a shot. We'll go over it. I'll tell you what classwork goes with it, exactly what you'll be assessed on on your quiz, which is scheduled for Monday. Okay, how did we do? Are you rocking and rolling? Are you finding this easy? For water? You can use 18.0148 if you want. I'm not that picky with it. Did you use what? 18.0148. It's pretty much just adding up the oxygen. Yeah, and water, by the way, I was just looking at your booklets. Water is, of course, a polar covalent compound, right? Because it's been? Okay. Basic. Yeah, like basic and mainstream. Like, I didn't use water because I knew You're so cool. Okay. <laughs> Guys, let's be nice. We're finishing up our videotapes. Okay. In regard to the problem asked. First thing you want to look at, we had some formula writing issues in period five. Did you write Did you write the chemical formula properly? 
Okay, some of the kids forgot to reduce. Don't do that. Right, because they had 2 plus 2 minus, and they forgot to reduce. So you got to this, right? Yeah. All right, good. So you're writing your chemical formula writing. Your chemical formula writing is solid. That's important. All right, did you get the formula mass? Now, if you had a 2 here, you should have gotten down to the 10th place. It's honestly not going to make a difference. It's good. Percent of water, you got 20.93. Excellent. So hopefully you have a pretty solid understanding here. And when you sit down and do your classwork, you'll have like eight problems on this stuff. By the time you get done with it, you should walk out of here not having to learn this stuff Sunday night, but just reviewing it, okay? Please review a little Saturday, a little Sunday, and you'll know it. When you jam it all in at 10, 11 at night, you're so tired, you might as well go night-night. Yeah. All right, and we'll talk about exactly what's on your quiz. In regard to your classwork, the classwork you want to be working on today, and you have an hour, is 18 through 23. Now, if you didn't finish through 17, as you should have, you might have a little bit more. But here is your focus today. Make sure you at least do one of each type of problem, because if you're having issues, Two more minutes, guys. If you're having issues, we can address those issues. So 18 through 23 in regard to the classwork. That's as far as the quiz goes. You'll have a question on simple conversion, moles to atoms. A question on conversion involving two steps, atoms to grams. A question involving compounds with conversions, whether it be moles to mass mass to molecules, etc. A simple question on percent comp, mass of an element in a sample, and a question on percent of water in a sample. So the quiz is, because everybody always will, how many questions? Five and a half. Why five and a half? Because you have a question on this, and when I said a half, the same way I set you up with your do now, where you got the percent, the half question comes in the second part where you got the mass of the element. Quiz is very, it's the easiest quiz of the quarter. I want only good, it's the easiest quiz of the quarter if you practiced a lot, which you're going to, and you can formula right. Um, is it going to be like the simple conversion with just numbers? Is it like a word? Um, a simple word problem. So, so you'll from a right. So I started you off with those eight problems at the beginning. That's very very low level. So I didn't give you anything like that. So they're word problems, but they're like one sentence. So it's pretty straightforward. You'll find your given and look for your unknown, like I did in the notes and I did in the classwork as well. All right. Questions. So your quiz for period six is Monday. You know what's on the quiz? You're going to practice. We'll review what's on the quiz, even though we just said it. 